Hello everyone and welcome back to Knit and Spin with Free episode 12. Welcome to anyone who is new and welcome back to anyone who is coming back to see me again. It has been a very long time. I, I mean, I guess it's not been that long. I My last episode was recorded on Halloween and then... I also published quite a few videos all kind of at once. So this isn't that bad. I don't think it's been like two weeks, I want to say. I apologize. I've been crazy busy. Um, but let's get into it. Uh, I have missed all of you. I have been... A little radio silent but I've been Instagramming a little bit not posting anything <laughs> it's one of my problems social medias not my thing I have I hardly go on Facebook I hardly go on Instagram I only recently started really going on Instagram since trying to like jumpstart my business of uh, uh, doodlebug yarn co so and even then, I am horrible at it. I am a genuine, natural introvert. I am not social. I am quite weird. But, I mean, who isn't these days? If you're, if you're normal, that's weird. Um, so, yeah, okay. Tangent aside. Let's get into it. It's been a while. Oh, shh. Poop. I forgot a finished object in the other room. Hold, please. Okay. <sighs> I just had to grab something because I did finish something within the last time I recorded, which is good. Um, uh, so yeah, we're just going to go into finished objects. I only have the one finished object in terms of knitting. Um, I've done a lot of other things, but we'll go into that a little bit later. I don't know if you guys can hear the obnoxious amount of road noise. That's apartment life in San Jose, butt up against a uh, major freeway, but... Yes, um, finished object, numero uno, and only. I finished my plumeria tank. Forgive the non-trimmed ends. I did block it, and I, all the winds are, ugh, all the winds, all the ends are woven in. They just need to be trimmed off, and I have not done that yet. But it is done. And I really like how it turned out. I mean, I love the lace. I... Okay. What I don't like is this. No matter what I do, no matter how tightly I try and like weave in ends right here to not have that splitting on like all of the joins for all the triangles that you join together, like it, there's always going to be pull there and I don't like it. And then there's like a mattress stitch up the edges and... I tried to do it as tight as I could and without like, you know, really making it silly, but it, it pulls and I don't, don't like it. And I've tried it on a few times. It looks beautiful on the models in for, so this is a wool and pine, um, design 
it's called Plumeria. All the models are like beautiful and the tank top looks so cute on them and they style it so nicely with like the low V, the high V or whatever. This doesn't, it doesn't look flattering on me. I don't know. I don't know. So this is going to be a Christmas gift. Probably to my sister. Because she literally can make anything look cute, which is rather annoying. And I know that she appreciates hand-knit items. So it will be going to her. I made the I want to say the 30 the size that just goes before it hits 40 inches. I don't remember if it's like a 38 inch bust line. I mean my my bust is not that big, but I like to have a little bit of positive ease and a little bit of give because I knit, I knit so tight. I learned that I knit freaking ridiculously tight. My gauge is at least four to five stitches tighter than any pattern gauge that I can ever imagine. And I learned that the hard way, not the hard way, but I really learned that when my pattern, I will touch more into that a little bit, but I did the number of lace repeats. I did it for the largest size and it's still short on me. And I don't know how that is possible unless I knit really, really tight or my torso is just obnoxiously long which I don't think I have a really long torso. My sister's torso is longer than mine. I have longer legs than her. So yeah, I'm just like, it's got to be my gauge. And of course, I don't gauge swatch because that's too much effort on my own account. Um, but yeah, I finished it. I am a little disappointed about how I don't like how it looks on me. But I'm proud of finishing it, and I'm sure my sister will really enjoy it and love it. So there's that. Ooh, that's the only finished object in knitting that I have. Oh, excuse me. That's the only finished object in knitting that I have. I've been really focused on my pattern and all of that. So let's go into whips and then we'll go into the other stuff. I have one whip and it's my dream knitting that I had spoken about last time about the snow pine pullover that infuses intarsia, color work, raglan, sweater, pullover, knit flat, but in the round. It's so interesting, but I don't know, but I don't know how to describe it. It is really fun pattern. And if you're not a fan of purling, I don't suggest it. But honestly, now that I've learned how to purl correctly, I want to say, or like wrap my yarn correctly, because I I'm a, what is it, a picker? Or is it English or continental? I don't know. But I hold my yarn in my left hand and I knit this way and I just grab the yarn from my left hand. So when you purl, I had started doing it the opposite way. So my purl stitches were always becoming twisted and I couldn't figure out like what I was doing wrong. And then I watched Wooly Witchcraft and she had mentioned that she's like, oh, I just saw this other podcast and they said, make sure that you're doing it this way. And she'd realized that she had been purling wrong the entire time. And I had been, I have been knitting for 
a lot longer. She had just started knitting like two years ago. And I've been knitting since I was four. Granted, I haven't gotten really into it. It was just garter stitch that I knew up until recently. I never really got in depth into it until oh my god, until like 2020. So yeah, I had been curling wrong for a very long time. Um, but now I don't. I don't mind purling because I can still I can still do it fairly quickly. Like it's not impeding my speed at all. So there's that, and it it's it's such a fun pattern. That was a little bit of a tangent, but I'm gonna show you my progress. I started it last Thursday. I am filming this episode on Wednesday, the 17th. Tomorrow is my youngest little bug's birthday. He is going to be four. Um, but yeah, I started this last Thursday. And actually, let's go over yarn choices really, fi really fast. So, I for my body color, I chose this one. I had a cone of this. It's um, just a hundred percent merino. I don't think it's super washed because it feels a little rusticky. It's not shiny and it's fairly easy to felt. So I'm assuming it's not super washed. I could check. I didn't check, but I got it from Paradise Fibers in a cone. Um, and it's sport weight. The pattern calls for fingering weight, but this is kind of a light sport weight. So I figured since I knit so tiny anyway it would be fine and it is so yes and the colorway is called mallard it's kind of like a deep foresty emerald green it's it's got a little bit of blue tinges to it I guess so a little tealy but like a deep 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 teal but more on the greener side of teal. Um, I love the color. I really, when I bought it, I wanted to make, I used it in my, my very first card and get that I knit that is over here that, cause I ran out of the hand spun for that one. So I had to do it on the sleeves. <laughs> watch my, is it my first episode? I actually do not watch my first episode because, oof. um, but yes, this is my main body color. And then I have my sleeves are some hand dyed yarn that I got from my dear friend Magda from Magda Knits. Uh, she naturally hand dyed these in onion skins and it just got so this deep gold and I commend her for natural dyeing. It has never really worked out for me in terms of like depth of shade or like even the softness. The The yarn is still soft. I always find that anytime I naturally dye, the yarn like gets a little like crispy from the whatever mordant that you end up using just to try and keep the dye in there or it just, it's not, it's very dulled color it's not vibrant and this is like it is gold this is gold from onion skins so thank you magda and these are my sleeves and for my little um wool and pine calls them sprinkles but they're it's a lice stitch pattern uh, for color work. Uh, I did my hand spun from the uh, wool that Magda had sent me that we did a fiber swap. And I thought that it was just perfect because now I have one project that has all the things that she had given me and it makes it extra special. And I am really, really enjoying this pattern so far. And yeah, it just, 
I'm very, very happy to have this and be able to utilize it and be so happy with the outcome so far. So if you're a hand spinner or you have got, if you have purchased or been gifted any sort of hand spun product, I am talking to you, Fernanda. I gave you some hands on yarn and you're like, it's too precious. Knit with it. You will appreciate it so much more when you have something that you can wear or then gift to someone because it's just the amount of effort that goes into it. You know how much effort goes into it. Like me even hand spinning the fiber that Magda dyed for me, it, it just made it really special. And then now me putting it into a project that I will be able to wear and enjoy all the time. I, there is, you know, that aesthetic where you're just like, I just want to look at it. It's just so pretty and so precious. And I want the perfect pattern. It's like, just start knitting with it. Just make a gauge swatch, honestly, just so you can see how it knits up. And then that will even further provide you information to be able to choose the pattern that you really want to use with it. But yes, if you have received, bought, gifted, whatever, made yourself hand spun yarn, knit with it, make something with it. Do not let it just waste away on the shelf, just admiring it make something with it. Believe me, I have <laughs> quite the array of hand spun yarns that, I mean, they're all up in my shop right now, but now after doing this particular pattern, because it's the hand spun is an accent color, it's not, I don't have to have a lot of yardage. For this particular pattern, for the size that I'm doing, I only need 230 yards of the accent color for the life stitch. So this is perfect. You can literally have two other contrasting colors and then have this be the pop, the, the, what draws your eye. And it's, it's perfect. So knit with your hand spun if you have it or if you want to get it. And then you're just like, it's so precious that you don't want to knit with it do it. Knit with it. You will not regret it. You will be so happy with it. And you know, if you knit something with it and you're not happy, rip it out, do something else. It's don't be afraid to use the hand spun yarn. Okay. That's my rant. <sighs> Fernanda, use the hand spun I gave you. Um, so this is what it is so far. You guys, I love it. And yes, last Thursday I have finished the yoke and I am working on the body. And I just, I can't color work. It's just, it's popcorn to me. I can't stop. And like, see my floats? Very evenly spaced and nice. I am just, I'm so excited to have this really nice, slightly oversized sweater to wear. I hit the mic, sorry, if it was a little, <laughs> but I, I even modified the pattern. I did some short rows. I'm so proud of myself. And I made them up. I just kind of just like went with it. I've never done this before in terms of modification to the point where I am adding short rows to a sweater pattern. It, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. And because of the color work, I put it in the ribbing. So the back ribbing is a little bit longer than the front, just so that it sits a little bit lower in the back. And I, I, I love it. I am kind of obsessed and I can't wait to block it and then wear it. 
I love the slight, just the variation of the seed stitches just going through this deep emerald green. It's there. If I'm rambling, let me know. Because I feel like I'm just kind of, I love it. Because I do. I am, I am in love with this pattern. I want to make more of this sweater just because it, the versatility of being able to use my hand spun as this little pop of color. The most struggle I had was actually choosing the body color and the sleeve color. Oh, no, the sleeve color I already knew because I definitely wanted to use Magda's sleeves, but I just wanted to make sure that I had enough for the sleeves because I do like long sleeve. So I, I'm def I knew about that, but like choosing the main body color and making sure all the colors like really like blended and felt really nice with each other. And I think, I think they do like I, the gold, the green and the purpley pinks and oh gosh, I have, I raved enough about this pattern. Again, this is the snow pine the most recent pattern that was just launched by Woolen Pine, I, I love. I honestly, I wish that I was part of their testing group because then I would have had one already. <laughs> but I, I love, I love it. I love it. And this is, I, this is the only thing I've been knitting on because I can't seem to pull myself away from it. Okay. <laughs> That's, well, I do have another whip. Oh, it's buried. Because, actually, it's more of like a UFO because I just, I cannot find the motivation to finish it. And it was supposed to be done by tomorrow. Let's just say it's not going to happen. It's the Mama cardigan for my family member that was supposed to be for their birthday. Aunt Jen, I'm sorry. If you're watching, yes, this is for you. I will eventually finish it. <sighs> but I'm sorry. I got bored with the pattern for a little bit and I will I will get back to it, but I'm just the craziness that has been recent in my life. I just wanted something that would bring me a little bit more joy and the pressure of having something that you have to finish in terms of gift knits and then it's the holiday season now and I'm like I have so much more that I want to do for all my friends and family and it's, uh, I'm sorry but I, I I will I will I did make you a, I did make you something that you can have when we see each other next um which is actually quite soon, so I'm excited about that. I I need to make something that matches it so that you can actually wear them both together, but have I knit on this at all in the last month and a half? No. I, I literally try. I sit there and I get through a few rows and then I'm like, why is this taking so long? There's no purling involved. I've already split for the sleeves. I don't have to purl. So why? And I found out that I actually don't mind purling at all. So why? Anyway, it's just, it's not moving as fast as I want it to. So now it's like a UFO and I haven't worked on it. I will get back to it, but I'm not going to now. Okay. Let's talk about my pattern, my alpaca, my knit mitts. This is just a small little example. I already gave the actual sample to my mother-in-law because they are for her. Um, but I will put in pictures that I took that are, will be in the pattern uh, right over here. My friend slash my mother-in-law's ranch hand slash vet tech, um, Raylan, 
slash my oldest son's like favorite person ever slash girlfriend <laughs> was lovely enough to model them for me with the alpaca that the gray yarn is made from. Um, her name is Iron Maiden. We call her May May. She has been around since my oldest son was born, so they are very close. Uh, May May actually feels that Henry is her child. So, sorry, Henry is my oldest son's name. I don't think I've actually ever said my kids' names before. I always refer to them as Doodle or Bug. And Doodle is my oldest, Bug is my youngest, Henry is my oldest name and Ollie is my youngest. Um, but yeah, they, they love each other. They have a lot of fun together, but Raylan was super sweet and modeled the gloves, the gloves, the mittens for me so that I can have professionally looking pictures in my pattern. And the test knit is underway guys. I set out a test knit call a week and a is it last? It's been like ten days, I think. I had a tentative deadline. I think I had discussed it last time that I wanted it done by last weekend. <laughs> so unrealistic, uh, especially because. Yeah, we're, we're not going to get into that because it would actually frustrate me and get me a little bit angry about the tech editing issues. But let's just say that my original pattern before I had it tech edited was actually way better than after I had it tech edited. So, but my test editors, they are unbelievably helpful. They have really helped me hone in to make my pattern understandable to any range of knitter. Um, I'm just, I'm so thankful to them. So I've, I've just kind of like left the end of the test knit kind of open-ended, but I am hoping to have the pattern actually launch by December 6th. And guess what guys? I'm going to have a kit for them in my shop. I have not Put it in my shop yet but be on the lookout because I just need to take pictures of it so I will have the two skeins of gray and white from Rockstar Alpacas which is my mother-in-law's alpaca ranch and then I can I will probably also have some other colors available from another local ranch um, and also a good friend, Charlene, uh, who has Integrity Alpacas up in Vallejo. And we're all very good friends. And she has great alpaca yarn. And I'm thinking about having some of her yarn be in part of my kits too, depending on how popular they are. I'm not that popular, but hopefully with the launch of my pattern and the the alpaca yarn is just, it's, it's so soft and it'll keep your hands so warm. And I absolutely love my pattern because the alpacas are just super cute. So I have been <laughs> scanning up. All of this started on cones, by the way. So I had to weigh out 100 grams. of there's there's a lot down there there's a lot um to make these little lovely kits uh put together i think i'm gonna set it when i do put it on my etsy shop i'm going to set it as a pre-order uh just so i know how many exactly i need and cost wise I, it's this is locally sourced, locally farmed alpaca, and it is very, very nice. It is not 
store-bought scratchy what we call crap packa and most of the time when people say oh alpaca is itchy it's because it's not uniform um but my my mother-in-law's alpacas she literally breeds the alpacas for that uniformity in their fleece to make the fiber feel like cashmere and like silk like you don't feel any like pokies or anything it's definitely next to skin soft um so yeah it's it's very very soft so i've been doing all of that i still have two mercones gray to um skein up but yes that is coming also I had mentioned in the previous episode that I wanted to do a collaboration with a bag maker for my kits and un I did hear back from her and unfortunately she is really really busy and she cannot do it but she definitely encouraged me to try it try making bags on my own because I do I I know how to sew I made my own wedding dress I made my own chef's coat. I went to culinary school, by the way. Um, and I graduated. That was where I went to college was culinary school. It's all related, isn't it? No. Um, <laughs> and you know, my job now has nothing to do with food anyway, but it's all about expressing yourself really. Right. But I really enjoyed sewing. Uh, and I hadn't sewn for a very, very long time. And just like these simple patterns such as bag making, you're literally sewing straight lines. You're not really doing curves or anything. So it's really straightforward, pretty simple. If you have a sewing machine, you can make a bag. And I guess if you have money to, for the materials, which I don't really, but I did anyway. Um, okay. So I tried my hand at bag making and they're pretty freaking adorable. Let me show you. So these are the bags that will be for the kit. Like little fall leaves. And then I have my little logo on there. And I changed my logo to say Doodlebug Yarn Co. instead of Do Doodlebug Yarn Shop. And the inside, it's like fall leaves still. And there it's like a box bottom. Sorry, the it's canvas on the bottom and the I don't know why I did that, but it's a little stiff for the top, but it will um loosen the more you draw string the bag and I love them I love how they turned out and I love them so much that I had to go to the fabric store again and buy $200 worth of fabric to make more bags <laughs> so there's these for the kits these are specifically for the kits I'm not going to um just sell them individually. These are four kits. I then made a little bit bigger size and I made pumpkin ones. And I didn't make the mistake of putting the canvas on the top for the drawstring. So these ones draw up really tight, which is good. And I love the inside. So again, box bottom, my little logo on there. These are slightly bigger. I would definitely say that um, the bags for my kits are definitely sock, but these ones could also be sock. They're, they're fairly small. I'm going to make um, a bigger size than this too for in terms of bags. Because I, like I said, I bought a lot of fabric. 
to make bags out of. So I have quite a few of these. I can't believe I'm bag making now too. And did you see the gold thread? Yeah, guys, I am a bag maker and a knitter, crocheter, weaver, hand dyer, spinner. What more could I possibly do? I will never do felting. I'm sorry, but I don't like it. But yeah. I love them. So probably expect to see more bags by Brie for kits in my shop. So expect that. They're not in my shop yet, but be on the lookout. I will, I just have to take pictures and, you know, make them look nice and beautiful. Uh, so this weekend, this weekend, um, is a maker's market up in Santa Rosa, California. So me, my mother-in-law, and then our friend Charlene, we're all sharing a booth and we are, um, vending. So I'm bringing a bunch of my, my hand spun and that I, I'm going to be, um, bringing some of my bags and like, that's why I'm also scanning up a bunch of my mother-in-law's yarn as well to sell at this maker's market. And I dyed up a bunch, a bunch of yarn. I mean, sorry for the crinkles. A lot of, a lot of yarn. So I'm just gonna briefly kind of skim through them. But I did, this is, Technically, it's my alpaca do base that I have in my shop, but this is a blend of alpaca and cotton. Um, the alpaca comes from three different ranches. Uh, one is from my mother-in-law's ranch, which is the Rockstar alpacas, and then um, Integrity alpacas, which is Charlene's, and then Wendy, who is... Oh my god I'll put it in it's something prairie happy prairie alpacas and she lives in Arizona um so these three ranches they came together they they sent in their full clip for which is all of their sheared animals all the fiber white fiber that they got from that year into this one run of um, yarn and they blended it with a with cotton which was also locally sourced I don't remember where um and they came up with this yarn and it ended up not being exactly what we wanted because it turned out very what Charlene calls it is funky chunky thick and thin because that's exactly what it is we had asked for a um, sport to DK weight back and we got this and it's definitely not that it's between bulky it's between all the weights honestly it's there's some parts that are like fingering weight and then there's some parts that's like this is super chunky so that's why it's funky chunky thick and thin um, so I dyed up a few of these. It's like a um, emerald or emerald flower. Wow. It's a nice deep blue. I had also glazed this in a gray to kind of de deepen the tone of blue that I had. The cotton doesn't take the dye. Um, only the alpaca does. So that's why it's a lot lighter than it would have been but there's a nice 
um, variation. My lighting is horrible. I did not want to put up my studio lights. I am sorry, but that's how it is. Uh, so it has a lot of variation. So it's a semi-solid of this nice blue. And then there's this one. This I would say this is kind of like a cherry Christmassy red, but in the pot, this was like blood red. It was really, really red. And then after I let it cool and I, then I got to washing it, a lot of the dye washed out because of cotton content. So it lightened up quite a bit and I was not wanting it to. I guess this could be like candy cane-ish. But there's not enough white to make it candy cane. But it's more of like the candy cane red than like a deep Christmassy red, you know? And that's kind of what I was going for, but uh, there it it's also a semi-solid of a red pinky tone, which is also very holiday-esque. This one I really love. So this one I'm gonna call Harvest because it's just it's it's harvest. It is the epitome of fall. When you look at this color, you're like, that's autumnal, definitely. So I dyed up some of this and I'm definitely going to be calling it harvest. It's perfect. And then I got this really nice, rich, tonal purple. And there's a little schmutz in there. I mean, I kettle dyed all of these to try and like get as much color coverage. Oh my God. Stop yawning. Stop it. To get as much color coverage as possible. Um, and just to like really saturate all the alpaca fiber and literally just leave the cotton just the white because uh, it's majority alpaca. There's not that much cotton content in this. I think I have the actual. It is an 80-20 blend. So it is 80%. Oh, Jesus. It is 80% alpaca and 20% cotton. So that's not what ends up making the color it end up being a lot lighter. Oh god. Of course, knocking things over. But I love how this color turned out. Okay. Oh god, sorry. I just totally bumped the mic really hard. So I was really in the mood for kits and like sock sets and stuff. So I made some. So here's one kit and it comes with two minis, my red and green and my new little Christmas colorway. I don't know what to call it yet. Let me know if you have any suggestions for this colorway. And it's, it's really cute. Yeah. So there's this kit. There's one with purple and red. And there's one with the green and the purple. But yeah, so I did two minis instead of like one mini for heels, toes, and cuffs. Uh, because these minis, they're, it's a high twist and they're, there's not as much yardage in these minis as my previous minis. I think there's like 78 yards in these minis 
and there's like 92 yards in the other mint, like the, my bundle of five minis. Those ones have 92 yards in each little mini skein for 20 grams. These ones have like 70, 72 yards. So just to make sure that you have enough, I wanted to do two minis and then the full. And like what you can do is like a little swap and like do the cuff, the leg, the heel and the toe, or the cuff, the leg and foot, and the heel and the toe and alternate. And I think that would be super cute. Or if you want to do shorties, you probably definitely have enough at that point. Uh, but yeah, I just, I really, I loved how my Christmas colorway turned out with just like the, the white, the green, the red, and with a little bit of a splash of purple. And I just, so these will be coming to the shop soon as well. I have not listed them yet. But they'll be in there. Oh, God. Sorry, crinkly again. And this is my Harvest sock set. So it's got a nice gold mini skein and the nice actual Harvest color mini skein. And then a mixture of, like, browns, golds, oranges in the main skein. Can you tell I had a lot of fun? So I made a lot of these. Well, I guess not, depends on what you mean by a lot. Like, that, not a lot, but it was a lot for me to dye all in one day. I did all of that in all in one day. Um, and they took obnoxiously amount of time to dry because it is now cold outside or getting colder outside. And it's been a little bit foggy, so the humidity in the air has been... A little bit more so it's been taking longer to dry everything which is a little bit peevy normally I even have a spin dryer but it's yeah it tends to stay wet a little bit longer so it took like two days for all of it to dry and on top of the fact that I didn't really have space to put it anywhere I'll put in pictures of what exactly I did to hang it because I do have a drying rack and then I have my yarn wall and then there's like this box that I drape things over. Suffice it to say, my entire kitchen slash part of my living room is being taken over by my crafting. And I cannot wait until we move where I have a room completely dedicated to all this. And I do not have to share space or my stuff does not have to bleed into other spaces that people will be walking through. I can't tell you how many times my kids have tripped on all this stuff that I have in this area. Even my husband has tripped several times on this stuff, but I need spots to put my stuff. So yeah, that's what's been going on this, this last few weeks that I haven't talked to you guys in a while. And my face like broke out. Like I... I was going to record last week and then, you know, the mask knee where your face breaks out because you have to wear a mask all the time because I, I have to go in my office every day. So I have to wear a mask the whole time I'm there. And then I come home and my face is just like pimpled mess, which is gross. Literally the day I was just like, I need to record tonight. I get home and... Like, I'm not recording with this business right here because, first of all, it hurts like hell and it just looks gross. So I was just like, I'm going to wait until it's all done and I'm not going to, it'll only be a few days and, you know, a week later, it still looks angry. And then I'm having like other breakout thingies. So yeah, that's, that's what's been going on. I'm very excited about my pattern. Please be on the lookout of what is going to be updated in my shop because that's going to be really exciting, especially because Christmas is coming. Um, 
advents. I'm not doing an advent. That's, I'm not there yet in terms of like dying for advents to sell. I, I'm not there yet. <laughs> but mom-in-law, if you are watching, look away right now and plug your ears and go la 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 la. And I'll tell you when to come back. So I had reached out to some of my Instagram friends and I'm just like, I bought a bunch of minis and I had planned to make an advent calendar for myself because I can't afford to buy one or I always arrive too late to be able to order one because they, they go up for sale in like March at the beginning of the year for, because make dyers need so much time to be able to dye 24 individual mini skeins. I mean, they don't dye them all individually, obviously, but they dye them in batches. But depending on how many people get them and like the packaging and making sure that it all looks nice and it can be a lot. So that's why they sell them super early. And I totally understand that. But I always come late to the game and I never get the chance to order one because they're all sold out. And then I sit there and I look on Etsy or I sit there and I try and search for like really good, like that are still available. And I'm like, nah, no, nah. that. And I'm a yarn dyer myself. So I'm just like, I could just make my own, but do I? I'm like, mm, so much work, but I'm going to this year because I made the effort of actually buying mini skeins and I am going to make myself a advent calendar as well as my mother-in-law. I am going to make her an advent calendar and we're going to open them together um for the 24 days before christmas so i am excited and i think that she's going to love it um like i said mother-in-law please don't be listening although i know for a fact that you haven't been caught up with my podcast for a very long time as well as most of my family except for my dad thank you dad you're very supportive. I think every time I bring it up to my sister, she's like, I just don't do YouTube. And I'm not telling her to watch it. I'm just like, just go on and subscribe. Like, you don't have to watch, just subscribe. And she's like, Ugh, effort. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not too worried about her actually seeing this before I give it to her because, you know, December 1st is coming real quick. And no, have I dyed it yet? No. Do I need to? Uh, yeah, because that's, so 24 plus 20, 48 little mini skeins that I need to dye and then be dried and then package in the little little drawstring bags and then give them to her. I don't have a lot of time and in two weeks, my family, like not my in-laws, but my family are all going to Disneyland and we are, it's kind of a yearly thing and we haven't been able to do it for a really long time. So, and it's something that my mom was really, really passionate about was Disney. And I mean, as are, as am I. Uh, but it's always so expensive, but we're able to afford it this year because we saved a bunch of money for it. And we're really, really excited about it. And my kids are excited about it. So that doesn't give me a whole lot of time to get all this stuff done, but fingers crossed I do it. And then I have all that, uh, roving that I also have to spend before the end of the year too. So Let's see if I all get it. Let's see if I get it done. I might have like a little vlog. I'm, I want to do vlogmas too. Like, am I putting too much on myself? Maybe, but it's going to be fun. I'll probably take you guys along with me on trying to, on dying my advent calendar. Um, like, you know, that's a good idea. Oh, geez. It's almost 11 o'clock. Um, what I'll do is I will 
dye all of the yarn for my advent calendar, me and my mother-in-law's advent calendar, and then have my husband put them all in the bags so I don't know what comes up first. So it's still kind of a surprise for me. I think that would be cool. I think I'm going to do that. Okay. I got to get to bed because it's 11 p.m. And I'm sure my husband's just like, just go to sleep already. Um, so yeah, I will, I will do that. I'll take you guys along. It'll be fun. And thank you so much for watching. Sorry, there was a little bit rambly at the end. Uh, please like and subscribe. I, I really, really appreciate it. Honest to God, really do. And I will see you guys all next time. Hopefully I'll have some little itty bit videos here and there between then and now. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.